He's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Hello. Oh, my goodness. It's that time. You hear those bagpipes? That's my friend Rodney. He works here in the big harbor. Oh, he's going away to bagpipe school. And he's playing the bagpipes to say goodbye to me. Goodbye, Rodney. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Uh, you know, saying goodbye to someone can be hard. Have you ever not wanted to say goodbye? Yeah. You know, not long ago, Theodore had to say goodbye to a special friend. Oh, but that's a good story for today. Dartworth the cable ship was visiting the big harbor. He was laying his giant cable along the shore. Please move me a little closer, Theodore, he called. Theodore helped push the great ship a little closer to shore. Thanks, Theodore, said Dartmouth. I really couldn't do this without you. You're welcome, smiled Theodore. He just loved helping Dartmouth steer in and out of the winding inlets and coves around the big harbor. It was an important job, but most of all, Dartmouth was so nice. Oops, called a voice. Sure enough, it was Digby, the harbor's own small cable ship. He was helping too, kind of. Particles and blisters, plubbered Digby. Stuck on the gibberty spiggity cable again. It seems poor Digby is always getting stuck on something. Theodore helped Digby untangle himself. There you go, Digby, smiled Theodore. Thanks, Theodore, said Digby. I think I spend more time helping Digby than Dartmouth, he thought to himself with a grin. It sure is a great day to lay cables, said Dartmouth. The greatest, agreed Theodore. The finest kind of day, chirped Digby. I don't think there was anything those three liked better than laying cables together, and talking about cables together, and, well, just being together. Working with you is my favorite thing in the whole world, Theodore said to Digby and Dartmouth. Why, thank you, Theodore, said Dartmouth with a big smile on his voice. I like working with you both very much, too. We're the three good buddies, proclaimed Digby. Aren't we, boys? We sure are, agreed Dartmouth. And always will be, concluded Theodore. The three friends were almost at the entrance of the harbor. Well, announced Dartmouth, I'm finished. For the day, added Theodore with a smile. And what a superior day it was, too, chimed Digby. No, said Dartmouth, I mean I'm... I'm finished laying my cable here in the big harbor. Finished, are you? said Digby. Superior. And what's next for us three good buddies, then? Well, said Dartmouth, actually... Now I'll be taking the end of my cable here all the way across the ocean. Going away, are you, Dartmouth? said Digby. Oh, well, that's nice. Off to new places and so forth. Superior. Well, can you come back tomorrow? asked Theodore quietly. Well, no, replied Dartmouth. The next day? asked Theodore. Well, no, repeated Dartmouth. When can you come back, Dartmouth? continued Theodore. Theodore, said Dartmouth slowly, I won't be coming back to the big harbor for a long time. But it suddenly felt like all the air had leaked out of Theodore's bumpers. Dartmouth was leaving. Theodore was so surprised and upset, he couldn't think of anything to say next. Digby, said Dartmouth, since I won't be here, uh, someone has to look after my cables. Well, that's only natural, said Digby. I certainly hope you can find someone good. 
Would you like to be in charge of my cables when I'm gone? Asked Dartmouth. Would I? Shouted Digby right away. All my starfish and little oysters, would I ever? Uh, should I check cables every day, or, or some cables one day and others the next? Or, or maybe half the cables in the morning and half... Hey, what happened to Theodore? Asked Dartmouth suddenly. Now, that's funny, said Digby. He didn't even say goodbye. Theodore floated off by himself. I don't want Dartmouth to leave, he said softly. I don't want to say goodbye. Saying goodbye felt like losing a friend, and that felt awful. The next morning, the other tugs set off for work. The dispatcher asked Theodore to stay behind a moment. Theodore, he said, since Darkmouth is leaving this morning, I thought you might like a special time before work to say goodbye to him. Oh, uh, I don't really want to say goodbye, replied Theodore quietly. Well, I thought you and Darkmouth were good friends, said the dispatcher. He was very surprised. But he's going away, said Theodore. And all my friends live here in the big harbor with me. Theodore's job that morning was moving Barrington Barge. He was floating along when he heard a familiar little croaky sound. Sure enough, it was Digby's horn. Theodore! Theodore! shouted the little cable ship, all out of breath. Wait up! Wait up! <sighs> Darkness is leaving now, puffed Digby. And, and I thought we could go and say goodbye together, and, and then I'm off to check his cables. Imagine me, Digby D. Cable Ship, in charge of all them humongous cables. Oh, superior! I don't want to say goodbye, Digby, replied Theodore quickly. But Theodore, said Digby, puzzled, we're the three good buddies, aren't we? And we have to say goodbye together, don't we? We can't be the three good buddies anymore, replied Theodore softly. Dartmouth won't be here. Oh, -ho, said Digby slowly. Well, I'll just say goodbye for you then, shall I, Theodore? And with that, Digby floated off as fast as he could. After Theodore had finished moving Barrington Barge, he started to go home to his dock. Just then, the harbor rumbled with the sound of a deep, powerful blast. It was Dartmouth's whistle. Two more long blasts followed. With a sudden chill, Theodore knew Dartmouth was saying goodbye to the harbor. Then, suddenly, a different sound echoed through the big harbor. It was Digby's horn. And it sounded like he was in trouble. I bet he's stuck somewhere again, Theodore said to himself, and hurried off in the direction of the sound. Theodore followed Digby's horn to a little cove, and sure enough, there was the small cable ship. Oh, uh, Theodore, sputtered Digby. I was officially commencing my first inspection at Dartmouth's cables, and I guess I was kind of excited and so forth, and, and I, was, I wasn't watching where I was, and, and well, I guess I kind of got stuck on this spliggity spliggity sand spit. <laughs> Don't worry, Digby, called Theodore. I'll pull you out. Hello, Theodore. Dartmouth, said Theodore. What are you doing here? I was leaving, explained Dartmouth, when uh, I heard Digby's horn. Oh, said Theodore. And also, I wanted to say goodbye to you, Theodore. Theodore slowly looked up at the big ship. Dartmouth, he began, I, I really wanted to say goodbye, but I guess I, I couldn't. I, I didn't want you to go away. Theodore, said Dartmouth in a very gentle voice, We'll still be friends, no matter how far apart we are. We will, said Theodore. Of course we will, said Dartmouth. You'll just have a friend in a whole new place. Well, said Theodore after a moment, I never thought of it that way. And one day, Dartmouth went on, 
When you're a bigger tug, maybe you can come across the ocean and visit me. Well, said Theodore, maybe I will. Uh, can I come too? Digby was suddenly floating right there beside them. Digby, said Theodore, I thought you were stuck. Well, said Digby with a sly smile on his voice, I, I was kind of stuck. We're stuck figuring out a way to get us both to say goodbye to Dartmouth, that is. Well, Theodore just had to smile. Theodore, said Dartmouth, it really is time for me to say goodbye now. Theodore floated very close to Dartmouth. Goodbye, Dartmouth, he said in his bravest voice. I'm really going to miss you. Goodbye, Theodore, said Dartmouth. I'm going to miss you too, very much. It seemed everything in the big harbor stood still for a moment. Then, Dartmouth began to float away. Streaming his giant cable behind him. Wait, called Theodore. Well, how will I know where to find you when I'm bigger? I'll always be at the end of this cable, called Dartmouth. Anytime you want me, all you have to do is give it a tug. And then, with one last great blast of his horn, Dartmouth was gone. Oops! It was Digby. Theodore, I think I really am stuck this time. Oh, God, I wonder how am I ever going to take care of these great big cables? Don't worry, Digby, smiled Theodore. I'll always be here to help you. Theodore quickly got Digby untangled. And the two set off to check cables together. It sure is a great day to check cables, said Theodore. Finest kind of day, chirped Digby. Theodore. Yes, Digby, said Theodore. We're still the three good buddies, aren't we? We sure are, smiled Theodore, glancing at Dartmouth's cable. Superior, said Digby. You know, my friend Rodney and I can still keep in touch, even though he's away at bagpipe school. It's like Theodore and Dartmouth. Now, where did I put that? Oh, here it is. You see, Rodney left me this tape of him playing the bagpipes. See? I just put it in my machine. But it sounds like he's right outside my window. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. You know, I just thought of something nice. When Rodney comes back from bagpipe school, he'll be a much better bagpipe player. And you know, Rodney really does need to go to bagpipe school. Theodore, he's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore, likes to do the things that friendly tugboat Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor in the great big world is so much fun. So many brand new things to discover. Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done. Oh, Theodore and Emily, Vodak, Hank and George, and the harbor master too.